Hey guys, today I want to talk about calculating mealtime insulin doses. There's two components to this calculation, two things you have to figure out. The first is the carbohydrate to insulin ratio, and the second is the insulin sensitivity factor, which is also called the correction factor. So, uh, the, the carbohydrate to insulin ratio is basically going to tell you how much glucose in a meal, or how much carbohydrate in a meal that's coming in, is going to be covered by a single unit of insulin. So each unit of insulin will cover how many carbohydrates, and this is for the meal that you're about to eat. The next component is the insulin sensitivity factor, and it's going to tell you how much insulin you're going to need to take to bring down any pre-meal hyperglycemia that you currently have. So let's look at each one of these. Two different rules. The first rule is the 500 rule, and that is basically taking 500 and dividing it by your total daily dose of rapid acting insulin. Now, if you happen to have somebody that's using uh, regular insulin, we have a different number, and that's 450 divided by your total daily dose. And again, that's if somebody's using regular, not rapid acting insulin. Okay? The uh, next component here is the insulin sensitivity factor, and this is the next rule that you need to keep in mind, and it's the 1500 rule. So it basically says if you take 1500 and divide that by your total daily, my pen's not writing very well again, dose of insulin, uh, it's going to let you know how many milligrams uh, per deciliter of glucose in your blood each unit of insulin is going to cover. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this. If we take uh, your current blood glucose, current blood glucose, and we subtract from that your target blood glucose, that's basically going to tell you how much glucose you are over your target, how high your blood sugar is above your target. So if we take that and we divide that by your insulin sensitivity factor, your ISF, then that's going to basically let you know how many units of insulin you need to take to cover that overage that you have. Okay, so let's look at a real life example here. We've got a total daily insulin dose, rapid acting insulin of 50 units for this particular individual, and they're about to consume a meal that contains 60 grams of carbohydrate. They check their blood sugar before the meal and they find it to be 210, and they know that their target blood glucose is 120. So they're going to need to do a couple things. First, we need to calculate the carbohydrate to insulin ratio. Okay, and we remember that is our 500 rule. So we take 500, we divide that by the total daily dose, which is 50 units, and that is going to give us a 10 to 1 ratio. 500 divided by 50 is 10. That's how much carbohydrate in the meal, how many grams of carbohydrate, will be covered by each one unit of insulin. Okay, so we know that they're getting 60 carbohydrates in this meal coming up. So if we take our 60 grams, 60 grams of carbohydrate, come on, pen, right, and we divide that by our carbohydrate to insulin ratio, which is 10, then that is going to tell us that we have to have 6 units of rapid acne insulin to cover that meal. Okay, so that's just part of the, part of the answer. So now we have to figure out our insulin sensitivity factor. So we're going to take our 1500 rule, 
1500 and we're going to divide that by our total daily dose and if you remember our total daily dose was 50 units so I take that I divide it by 50 and that is going to give me 30 and again this 30 is telling you that each unit of insulin that you take is going to lower your blood glucose by 30 milligrams per deciliter. So if you remember our, our pre-blood glucose, pre-meal blood, <laughs> blood glucose was 210. Our target was 120. We can actually set up something similar to a sliding scale. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our target and we're going to make a grid. So 120 is our target. Then we're going to add 30 for our insulin sensitivity factor to that 120 to make our first range. So that's going to be 120 plus 30 is 150. We're going to make another grid. We're going to start at 150 this time. 150, which was this number right here. We just bring that down. okay? And then we're going to add 30 to that. Make a 180. And the 30's coming from our insulin sensitivity factor. Then we're going to bring our 180 down. And we're going to add another 30 and we get 210. 210. Sorry, this isn't writing very well anymore. 210. And then we're going to do it one more time. We're going to have 210 to 240. 240. Okay? So we know that our blood glucose is 210. Well, that kind of gives us a little bit of a quandary because we've got a 210 here and a 210 here. Oh, I need to do one more thing before we do that. So each unit of insulin is going to cover these ranges. So if I have my blood glucose somewhere in this first range, 120 to 150, I'm going to need one unit of glucose. If I'm in the range of 150 to 180, I'm going to need two units of glucose. If I'm in 180 to 210, I'm going to need three, and so on. So I will need four units for this last uh, uh, range. So again, we're kind of in a quandary because our blood glucose happens to be right at 210. So I've got a 210, that tells me I could use 3 or 4, I'm right on the borderline, right? Well, if you think about it, if I use 4 units of insulin and it's going to drop my blood glucose by 30 units with each unit, then I'm going to go, the first unit is going to drop me from 210 down to 180, that's 30. My next unit is going to drop me down to 150. My next unit is going to drop me down to 120. My next unit will drop me down to 90. 90 is not low, so that would be okay. If I use 3, it would drop my blood glucose down to 120. That's not excessively high, so that would be okay. And again, we don't use half units. So either one of these answers would be okay. So, that being the case, let's just say that we're going to decide that we're going to use 4. Okay? So, we've got our carbohydrate to insulin ratio. If you remember, going back, we calculated that to be 6 units. So, we have from that 6 units that we need to take before our meal to cover the food we're about to eat. And then we just decided on the insulin sensitivity factor because I'm hyperglycemic before I eat my meal. I'm going to need, we decided, four more units here. So I add these two guys together. My total dose for this meal that I'll need to take is going to be 10 units. Okay? And that's basically how you do these problems. Thanks for listening.